You know, I think Stan's right. Do you? A holiday would do you good. I don't know. Things don't really seem sort of settled enough, do they, to go away and leave them? In what way? Well, this whole business of the takeover business for a start. I mean, it's not completed. It is completed. It's out of your hands now. Yes, well, well, this whole thing about working for Mrs. Freeman. I haven't got used to that yet. Who has? Anyway, I think it's important to stick around and sort of mark out the territory, if you know what I mean. Guard against certain things like, like being told to come on a reception just like that. You agreed. Well, under duress. And I let her know in the hope that it might have a steadying influence. I wouldn't bank on it. Well, if I leave now, I mean, heaven knows what I'll come back to. You know, Jill, you're forgetting something. Am I? Adam is going to be here rooting for you, looking after your interests. Yes, yes, I suppose that's true. If anyone dangled a holiday under my nose, you wouldn't see me for dust. <laughs> and I must say, I do want to see Sarah Jane again. I mean, when Stan mentioned that. He's very different, isn't he? Hmm? Well, Stan, from Adam. Hmm. Oh, chalk and cheese. You still seem very fond of each other. Well, yes, we are now. He's very caring. Yes, I suppose he is. Reception? Can I... Oh, I'm most terribly sorry. If you would like to just leave everything and um, perhaps go and have some lunch. Oh. Well, would you like to see the duty manager then, perhaps in the bar and have a drink? Yes, uh, Mr. Chance. Fine. Well, I'll get it all sorted out. OK. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Shelley 12 hasn't been made up. Oh, no, Mr. Grafton is just doing his tiny nut. Oh, darling, mm. can you go have drinkies in the bar with a Mr. and Mrs. Grafton smoothing over job? Oh, why? Oh, they've just booked in and Shelley 12 hasn't been cleaned. Well, Kath will deal with it. Mm. It's her lunch hour. Oh. Well, I want to see her as soon as she gets back. I just starting to catch the shops. Oh, I was hoping we could have had a bit of lunch. No, I haven't got time, actually. Well, have you eaten? Uh, no, but I'll have a sandwich when I get back. Oh, it's not good enough. Well, it's going to have to be, isn't it? Anyway, I seem to be rushed off my feet these days. And last night, do you think I could get off to sleep? I tossed and turned. Oh, doesn't help, does it? Oh, must have been daylight before I dropped off. Then, of course, it didn't seem five minutes before the alarm goes off. The wakes <laughs> frightens me to death. <laughs> Look, why don't you drop in and have a checkup? What have I thought? Oh, you're looking a bit peaky. I'm all right, honestly. I'll probably sleep like a log tonight. Well, you wouldn't do you any harm. You know your trouble, don't you? You worry too much. Anyway, I must dash. We've got some new girls, and if you don't keep an eye on them every minute... Oh, all right, cheerio. Then I'll give you a ring. Yes, do. Any time. Mm. Oh, it's, it's absurd. Mm. Mm. I'm eating this salad like a mad thing. And all because I've got this inbuilt feeling and dread that La Freeman's going to come waltzing in and catch me at it. Relax, she won't. She's gone out to town and she won't be back till late this evening, so mice can play. Hmm. I do feel a bit mousy, though, when I'm with her. <laughs> Rubbish. All you've got to do is make sure she gets as good as she gives. Oh, easier said than done. Oh, yeah, I'd love to have seen her face there when you walked out of the motel. <laughs> <laughs> so would I, only I was too busy walking. Mm -hmm. Ooh. I am so sorry. Reception told me Miranda was here alone. Uh, just forgive me, Paul. I'm just practicing being a nervous wreck. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm just about to go off duty. Lucky you. I'm told that the sale is still on at the furnishes. I thought I might purchase a bed. What, what, you haven't got a bed, Paul? Oh, I do, I do. But this is for the spare bedroom for visitors. What a considerate young man he is. I wonder, ladies, if you might advise me as to the best kind to get. Kind? I mean, big, small, firm or soft. Oh, oh small big and, and firm. <laughs> <laughs> Have you got room for a double bed? At or push. Then push, Paul. A double bed gives you so much more scope. <laughs> I shan't be using the bed myself. Well, whoever does. Right. Large and firm seems to be the general consensus of opinion. Thank you for your <laughs> advice, Oh, Paul, 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 Paul. I haven't had my invitation. To? To your housewarming. Oh, 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 there is some way off yet, Jill. I'm afraid the place is still a bit of a hovel. It's far from ready for visitors. Except for your double bed. Mm, you do have your priorities right, Paul. <laughs> right. <laughs> I think he's being unduly secretive about this house of his. Well, I wouldn't say that. You know, Paul, he wants everything perfect before he'll let any of us have a peek. Hmm. Oh, oh, at last. I've been looking for you. 
It's my lunch What hour. went wrong with Shelley 12 this morning? Wrong. It wasn't clean. Oh, no, it's that girl, that new girl. Yes, but didn't you check? Well, most of them, yes. Why, have there been any complaints? Yes, there have. They've been smoothed over, but it's not good enough, Kath. Lorraine? Chalet 12 wasn't made up this morning. No. When I give you a list of chalets, I intend them to be done. I can't be looking over your shoulder every five minutes. You wouldn't like it, and neither would I. But... I take it it's been done now, has it? Yes. By you? Yes. Properly? Yes. Well, it's not to happen again. I will not have sloppy work, Lorraine. Do you understand? Yes, Mrs. Brownlow. All right, Mr. Chance. Yes, thank you, Mrs. Brownlow. We are allowed the odd little slip, you know. Yeah. As long as we learn from our mistakes. Well, thing is, mm -hmm. I didn't make one. Oh? I did 13 to 24. That's what she told me. Are you sure? Positive. Being you and that, I wrote it down. Could be a fair old game. Mm -hmm. Darts tonight, man. We're playing the Legion at home. The boys are coming. You coming? I can't sit there. I might get you a go on the microphone. You know, sit up and knee, Jackie Seven. Seven, double top, double top. Give him a big hand. Oh, come on. Where are you going somewhere else? Or what? trees. Not again. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to flog her that car, you see. She can't make her mind up. Well, that's no problem. Take me along. I'll give her the patter. We'll flog the car. Get back to the King's Head for the match. I'd rather go my own, Sydney. I don't want to cut or anything like that, you know. I don't want to muscle in on a percentage, Mac. It's a very delicate matter. Ah, that's a different thing, Squire. Well, when it comes to delicacy, us workers know our places. We we'll leave that to the managerial classes. We did a fair amount of business at the exhibition. Hmm, clever you. Run of the mill stuff, still is certainly worth a visit. I'm going back the day after tomorrow, by the way. Oh? Have you given it any more thought about coming over with me? Well, I'd like to, but I really don't know. I had a word with Freya, who spoke to Sarah Jane, who is over the moon. You shouldn't have spoken to her. Not until decisions have been made, it just builds up her hopes. Well, she was listening in on the extension. Look, you're very important to her. She doesn't lose sight of the fact that you're her real mother. And phone calls are fine, and letters are fine, but visits sets the little heart pounding, doesn't it? You certainly know how to twist my arm still. Your, your decision. Well, I suppose I could. Just a breathing space, a couple of weeks. That's what everybody says I need. Well, almost everybody. Adam could be a bit tricky. Why? What's his problem? Oh, just just me going away. Doesn't he trust you? It's not that. No, I mean, Adam and I, we... Well, we work as a team. And now, more than ever, it has to be teamwork. Well, work on him. The way you used to work on me. You were always getting your own way. If my memory serves me correct. That is not true, Stanley Hartley. Anyway, give it a try. You've got a couple of days. He's not that unreasonable, is he? Adam? No, not really. It's just you never know which way he's going to jump. I like that. Oh, I do like that one. It's a bit over your price range. But I know the model in good condition. That's Vernon's problem. <laughs> I don't ask him for much. It is a nice motor. Trouble is, they make all the photos look so attractive, don't <laughs> they? It's all part of the sell. It's a competitive market. That one really grabs me, if you get my meaning. But, well, you can't go by looks, can you? You have to experience. That's what I always say. Yes, well, I could arrange a test drive. Could you? Are you an angel? Well, it's all part of the service. I'm so indecisive, you see. Lady's prerogative. You should try telling that to Vernon. Oh, buying a second-hand car is a big step. I mean, I can help you from the mechanical side of it. But when it comes down to it, you've got to choose the one you like. Um... Would tomorrow suit? Hmm? For a test drive. I'll ring the dealers. I'm sure it'll be all right. Evening would suit me fine. About six-ish. Sure. Hello, Judy. Hello, darling. Home nice and early. I'll beat the traffic. Evening, Mr. Daintree. Don't tell me she's broken down again. Oh, no, nothing of the sort. Look, what do you think of that? 
You know the trouble with women? What's that, Mr. Daintree? Never satisfied, that's what. Go to Germany? Yes. What on earth for? Well, to see Sarah Jane, for a start. Yes, but why now? Well, Stan's offered and he's cleared it all with Fred. Oh, it's out of the question. What? Well, it's bad timing. What? Absolutely hopeless, Jim. I don't see why. Look, you don't need me to tell you that we no longer rule this roost. We are employed. I mean, employees have holidays, don't yes, they? Yes, but by arrangements. Not choice, demand, or in this case, whim. It is not a whim. Oh, it's all very well for you. I could do with a break from this place. I mean, you've enjoyed all this infighting, but it wasn't my scene. I suffered. Well, hadn't you noticed? Oh, yes. Oh, come on, Jill. Of course I've been noticed. And I've suffered too, darling, but we've come through it. And we've come out the other side. And we've also come out very well. You must see that. But we can't just leave it to them. We've got to demonstrate to this company that our opinion is valuable. You must see that. Well, I mean, I could just ask. Her. No. But what would be the harm? Because she would refuse, darling. She's not going to let a valuable member of staff go off so soon after a takeover. Valuable, he says. I'll have you know, she's had me stuck on reception all morning. I mean, that's the value she puts on me. All right, supposing she says yes, we would be indebted to her. That'd be crazy. Any debts to be chalked up are, are her to us. That's where our strength lies. You must agree to that. I suppose so. Is that for us? Crazy. Thought you might like something pretty to look at. No, poor little housewarming gift. Well, we mustn't keep you, Mr. MacDonald. No, I really must be on my way. Sure we can't tempt you to a drink? Oh, no, my landlady's cooking something special tonight. And I'm late as it is. Evening, Mr. Daintree. No. It's very kind of you to go to so much trouble for me. Oh, there's no trouble at all. And I promise to come to a decision very soon. There's no pressure in your own sweet time. I'll phone you in the morning. As early as you can, so I can plan my day. Will do. Bye, Mrs. Daintree. Bye, Mr. McDonald. What's he phoning you about? Test drive he's arranging. Cancel it. Why on earth? It could look bad. What are you going on about? You cruising round the streets with our friend there at the wheel. I don't understand. He stayed too long under the sun lamp. How could you, Vernon? Well, maybe you don't care. But there's a lot of people around this area who are a bit choosy. Do you know what I mean? And I do business in this area. We don't put that at risk by you playing Lady Bountiful with the workers, OK? I'm not going to cancel it, Vernon. He's put in a lot of time and effort, and it's only fair he should get his reward. I'm Starkers. Miranda, dear, could you spare me a tiny moment? I can say what I have to say with my eyes shut. What? This. Yes. Egg. Right. Scrambled. Brilliant. Stuck. True. Disgusting. I'm not asking you to eat it, Paul. I am asking you to relieve me of the sight of it, dear girl. Just turn a blind eye. I have cast a professional eye over kitchens my entire working life. Kitchens and their utensils should be absolutely spotless. My standards are very high, and I refuse to lower them just because I happen to be sharing with someone for whom the scrambling of an egg is a culinary booby trap. Give it here. I shall clean this pan until you can see your face in it. And I can't say you were treat in store. I was about to have a bath. I take it you've left that in pristine condition? Uh, naturally. What game are you playing? I beg your pardon? All this nonsense about Jill wanting to go off to Germany. You call it a game? Would you call it something else? If I had to call it anything, I'd call it a straightforward desire of a mother to see her child. Oh, would you indeed? What would you call it? It's a bit sudden, isn't it, Stan? You going off to Germany and my wife wanting to go off with you. You're barking up the wrong tree. My wife has been discontented ever since you came through that door. Listen, it wasn't my fault that I arrived here in the middle of a crisis. I was asked to help and I did all I could. I also came down on your side, remember? Now, Jill's got her life and I've got mine. I'm happy with my lot. Now, if she isn't, don't go looking in my direction for the reasons. I don't want her to go. That's up to you, if you're calling the tune. But you've got to live with it. Mm. 
Miranda, dear, a little less volume would hardly detract from that masterpiece. Thank you, beautiful little girl. Come in, you come in. Oh, it's, um, yes, it's lovely. Yes, absolutely. Uh, it's early days, yeah. Oh, a masses of scope. My poor, you do live glamorously. Actually, I was about to take a bath. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I just popped in to give you this. <laughs> Charming. Well, let me see. Out of drafts, a bit of sunlight over here, I think. Oh, let's have a look. Mm. Absolutely delightful. And there's a message. Oh, it's just a joke, really. Thought you might like something pretty to look at. <laughs> Look, Jill, actually, I was about to go out to supper and I'm, I'm running a bit late, so... Oh, uh, not to worry. Uh, don't think me rude. Oh, not at all. I only popped in on the off chance. Might as well find the place empty. You might indeed. Ah, the fuels. Just my luck. Oh, you know, the wiring in these old cottages Paul, can be positively lethal. Oh, yes, I'm having it done. Paul, Ru Paul be a darling. I'll have that drink you're raving on about now. <laughs> upstairs. I was drying my hair. <laughs> <laughs> Jill, look, look, let me explain. Oh, absolutely. No, no, no. Things are not as you imagine, no, Jill. It's just a business arrangement, yes. Jill. You know, we're sharing the costs and so on. Why don't you have a drink and we'll tell you all about it? Yes, no, 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 no. I, I must go. I'll see you both at work tomorrow. Oh, Paul, that message, a bit superfluous, wasn't it? What did she mean by that? She felt I was in need of something pretty to look at. <laughs> I don't call it funny. I call it very flattering. I call it disastrous. Stay with us as we head down under to Ramsey Street for Neighbours. That follows the break here on UK Gold.